There are a lot fewer two-parent families. What's worth more, a dollar today or a dollar tomorrow? Almost nobody gets out of love alive. Prisoners' rights is out of sight, out of mind. Is your brain on God? You ain't ready to oppose their discussions ever. How they thought black right. families right. have to have the right. What's worth more, a dollar today or a dollar tomorrow? What's worth more, a dollar today or a dollar tomorrow? What's worth more, a dollar today or a dollar tomorrow? What's worth more, a dollar today or a dollar tomorrow? What's worth more, a dollar today or a dollar tomorrow? Welcome, folks, to your reality gurus, the show where we take a commonsensical approach to issues through complex conversation. I am your host, G. Cleave, and this is a good one today. Real good one. Debate style. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, you hear laughing in the background. Cyrus, introduce yourself to the people, folks. What up, what up? <laughs> Gonna be on. Copy, copy. Well, you know, um, We've been thinking about this for a little while now. So I told you guys I had something for you, right? Right? So now you got my man Cyrus in here. Let me go ahead and give the mic over to my man DB. DB, tell the people how you feel this morning. I'm I'm feeling good, son. Your energy kind of scared me a little bit, but I'm good Listen. overall. That's <laughs> it. Told you guys, man. Um, right now we're gonna just get right into it. It's no sense in us wasting any time, man. Um the general question is going to be, are we as Americans setting our future middle class up for failure? Or are we preparing them for success? Now, um, I kind of stumbled on this topic because it's kind of a passion of mine. Uh, when I think about um, the next generation, and what their contribution is going to be. Um, it's kind of foggy, it's kind of cloudy. Um, you know, we see some flashes of brilliance, but then, you know, uh, next thing you know, we can have a school shooting and now we start wondering again. So I guess I just want to ask you gentlemen, um, how do you feel personally um, about, you know, about this topic? Do you think we're doing enough, you know, our generation, we're doing enough to prepare the future generation? But I say the middle class specifically because People with money seem to be able to adjust regardless of what the climate is. But for individuals that have to go through the system, live check to check, so to speak, um, are we doing enough to prepare for that, to prepare them, um, you know, for what's coming up in the future, successful or failure-wise? I'll hand it over to you, Ben. So, you know, when you ask that question, the one thing I think about, like, even a couple of years ago, I remember, you know, hearing a lot of stuff on, on news or whatever that the middle class doesn't even really exist. The only thing that keeps the middle class alive is stuff like overtime, you know what I mean, where, where you have to work over your regular hours in order just to make your, your paychecks dry, you know, in order to make it last. And, and when you think about our society, which is a capitalistic society, and it's based mainly on the jobs that you have and, and how, how strong that that is is what depends on on your individual growth that yeah i think kind of in some ways we are kind of going to fail in the future if um the middle class is barely there now gotcha, you know? gotcha. i mean i mean you know um like i said uh the financial component i think is key because i, I like over over time when you think about you know the wealthiest individuals in this country, regardless of what the climate was like, they was always wealthy and it was always okay. So now it's interesting you bring up the idea of the middle class not existing anymore. So then what will they be? What will you consider the individuals who are not part of that 1% the uh, billionaires of this of this world? Like, what would you consider them? If they're not considered middle class, what would you consider them? I mean, I don't know the terminology, but I mean, you know, you don't only go down. So if the middle class becomes, I mean, I really think it's just going to be a matter of two classes. It's going to be rich and it's going to be poor. And there might be sub levels of, well, not even poor, but poor. Mm -hmm. And there might be sub levels of, of even that where, you know, the people who are already kind of on the bottom move further down where they, they hit rock bottom. Mm -hmm. Um but I really think it's going to be just two classifications instead of just having having these three sets. Got you, got you. Okay, so I mean, I, I could definitely understand that. All right, so Sai, you talk to me from your your perspective. 
um, success, failure, what are we doing? Well, this is a, a pretty heartbreaking topic here because um, I'm going to agree with Dane. And it's, I'm going to just say it. Our generation is doomed. It's doomed. Mm -hmm. I, it, there's so many things like wrong. There's so many th things that are, that are um, offensive. So the first point I'm, that I'm going to make is that, you know, like uh, this generation, it's all about being offended. Everyone's offended. Everything's offensive. Uh, everybody's getting butthurt. You know about different topics, and, and this is and this kind of mentality is preventing people from actually you know taking risk, from actually you know uh, doing what they need to do to to grow and to succeed in life, which is mm -hmm. which is sad. That's that's where it's it's just, it's terrible. Another point so it's I'm, more okay. Sorry, go oh, ahead. No, 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 I'll I'll shut up. Go go ahead. What you no no because I I just I, I want to be sure that I'm clear. So you're saying it's more of an individual thing. So um, regardless of what us as this generation uh, whatever it is that we do our contribution is going to be minimal if these individuals don't have it inside of themselves to go ahead and get what they need to get i just want to be sure if that's the way you're going because once we move on in this thing there's no flip-flopping <laughs> once you take the stance there's no flip-flopping so as long as the people understand exactly where you are right now that's good for later on so all right so like i was saying so are, are we talking about you're thinking it's more of an accountability issue Let's not blame your failures and inadequacies on any one parents. Focus on yourself, and that's that's the stance you're taking. If I'm clear, just want to yeah, be yeah, clear. That's, yeah, that's one of the biggest things that, that that comes with it. You know, like it's it's never like you know, no one takes responsibility anymore. Everyone's like, oh, it's not my fault. You know, he he called me a name, so it's his fault, or I didn't win because of that. Which leads into my next point. You know, not not winning. Everyone these days is getting praise for coming last. Everyone's getting a, a, a participation medal. And, you know, do you think that's, that's right? Do you think that's fair to, like, the, 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 the kids or, or people that put in the time and, and extra effort to, to come out on top, to come out in first place? You know, what, what is that telling everybody? Just, oh, it's okay, you know, just go ahead and try and, and do your best. And, you know, if, if you fail, no big deal, you know, just move on. No, that's not right. If, you, if you're passionate about something, if you love to, to play a particular sport or a, 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 a specific um, instance, you, you know, it's, uh, we, we need to teach our, our, our children that if you want it, you, you need to go, go and get it. It's, it's not going to be handed to you. And that's kind of like where, where we're at these days. Everyone thinks it's okay to lose or, you know, it's not, no big deal here. You know, good job. No, it's not a good job. You know, you lost. But, you know, even though you lost, if, if, if you want to succeed uh, next time, you need to put in the extra uh, effort and put in the hard work to achieve that. Gotcha. So, you know what? Um, I can remember, uh, this is some years ago, man, I had to, I read an article um, that kind of referenced some of the stuff that you were talking about with regards to, like, everybody winning. Like, the, 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 the climate now is everybody is a winner. And what he was talking about was, if I quote it right, the wussification of America. That's how he labeled it as the wussification of America. So if I shoot this back over to you for a minute, since we just kind of focused on um, the future middle class not even being labeled the middle class later on. So we're going to go from the rich and the not so rich. Go on to Cyrus's point. Um, how do you think that would play in if, you know, the generation that's going to, uh, to come after us starts focusing more on accountability, do you think that's going to have uh, play a role into, um, you know, where they are, you know, once they start doing their own thing? What do you think about that? Um, I, I kind of, you know, I don't disagree with the, with the overall theory. Um, I kind of find it, usually I always wonder when people make those arguments about accountability compared to the overall aspect of the situation. How do you quantify that? Like, like you know, I, I agree with that, but like I also agree, like a lot of stuff that we learn, like like I know growing up, one of the things is to tell you, get a good job, right? Get get this, uh, you know, work hard, get a good job, make money, retire, you know, get a, get everything else. Um, but if the job is not there, if, if you know, the qualifications change, if everything else changed within the system, and this is the only thing that you know, um, how can you fully blame individuals? Yeah, you know I mean, so I think I think it's a mixture of both. But I think when you look at like a whole section of people who might be doing worse, you kind of have to look at the system. So like, you know, if, if I was going to take it to stuff that I know, which which is, you know, um, the history of black people, and you look at things like maybe redlining, which kept people mm -hmm. out of 
neighborhoods. You looked at at um you know people not being able to get bank loans and all this other stuff where they can move up, right? Where they can't get property. Like like when the suburbs was was coming up, um a lot of white people were able to get their money through that property that, that were buying that black people weren't able to get, right? Mm-hmm. And that was that they were less of a go getter. It just they didn't have the opportunity to do it. So I think mm-hmm. it's a mix of both. But if I think overall, when you you look at a whole class of people that don't get something, it, it's probably a little bit more systematic. And 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 some of that stuff I think also is tough. Like if, if the environment that you're in doesn't teach you much of anything else besides that environment, you become part of that environment. You know what I mean? Like that's that's what we are. We're social creatures. So basically, if you you grow up in a poor, low economy neighborhood, even though you might not be technically poor yourself, you kind of take that same mentality with you. And you don't, mm-hmm. if you don't know anything else besides that. So, you know, I, okay. I don't see this argument. It's just, it's just the, the, the level. It's maybe the percentage that I wonder how much is that and how much is the actual, you know, uh, more of a systematic thing. How much of it is actually, you know, society as a whole that needs to change. Okay, okay. I so what, what were you... So, uh, I'll give me one. Hold on, Cyrus. One second. Let me just ask because I want to make sure he addresses um, the issue with everybody being classified a winner, the losers. I want to know his stance on that because uh, just a real quick personal. Um, I, I, I agree with that totally. I agree with that totally. I agree with the fact that we we need to. I mean, first of all, I think I think it's bad when you teach people that it's it's, it's a bad thing to fail. Like everybody needs to fail in order to, to, to learn how not to make those mistakes again. So I agree with that. I agree with you shouldn't teach everybody that, you know, we're on equal setting, even if this this uh person obviously did better than you. That I do definitely agree with. Um it's like I said, it's just the amount that I would put into the actual problem. Um that, that I, I I kinda wonder. Okay. I, I mean, okay, so Cyrus, if we bring it back to you real quick, what, 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 uh, you gotta make your quick point before I move on. Yeah, so, uh, so I, I'm more of like an individual, uh, individual, uh, I'm sorry, individualistic person. But, you know, uh, for, for Dane's argument or for what he's saying, you know, I, for, for a whole society on a more, you know, um, uh, massive scale or mass scale of, a, of, of an actual community, um, it's, it's, it goes hand in hand with my point as well. Because now, you know, with, with the, the ever the ever um, growing population, it's it's growing so massively and so fast, so exponentially. You know, now you know you have to you can't you can't sit there and say I lost, no big deal. No, now it becomes so much more competitive. And the point that I was making is that we're not competitive anymore. And you know, to, to make it in this in, the, in this society, in this world, in this generation, uh, now you have to be competitive. You have to say, okay, how am I going to be better than than the next man? I need to do this, this, this. To, to be ahead, and that's how and those people are gonna, you know, like have have the jobs. Those people are are gonna make it in life. Those people are gonna be successful. So I guess one of us has finally taken an official stance because, based on what you're saying, I think it's safe to assume that you feel that we are setting our future middle class or poorer class up for failure. Do I, um, am I uh, correct in that assessment? Uh, and and that's interesting. Uh, this small little story. Um, uh, a couple years ago, uh, my oldest son was in uh, football, and I'm sorry, not football. Um, wrestling. It was wrestling. Um, one of the things that uh, those coaches used to tell, you know, me is that you know the reason why we have a lot of trouble with the guys or the kids that come, you know, to do the wrestling is because this is an individual sport. If you lose on that mat, there's no one else for you to blame. You got your basketball, your football, your soccer, all of these sports are team sports. So when everybody loses, it's like everybody loses together. The, the, the wrestling was different because you got this one-on-one situation. You get pinned that there was no one there to help you. Um, but the thing that I thought was weird because um, he was nine when he actually started. And I thought that was kind of young. But, you know, where we live, they start – their kids wrestling at like 40 or five years old. So he was already five, four or five years behind, you know, these other kids as far as skill set is concerned. So when he got in there and he was just getting overwhelmed with kids that, you know, were his size or maybe even smaller just because of the technique. Um, at the end of it all, there was a trophy ceremony. Now, he lost a couple matches, but he won a few as well. So I didn't, I didn't expect him to 
um, like first, second, or third place, you know, maybe fourth, or fifth, or whatever, I wasn't expecting him to medal, is what I was saying. When he medaled um, and got his trophy, I thought it was pretty surprising because I, you know, I do agree that he won some matches, but he lost a few too. I don't think that he performed in a manner that was worthy of an award, right? But then it got worse, gentlemen, because I know he performed better than some other kids there. And I was shocked that he received an award, but there was kids who performed worse who were receiving awards as well. And they continued to go down the line. There was actually a first place and it went as far as 17th place. There was a trophy for 17th place. So, so, um, Terrible. when, when, when I, I, I agree, I agree because I don't see how giving a kid who performance was worthy of a 17th place medal or trophy. Like, what is it that you're teaching him? I mean, you know, so, I mean, I, with that little story, just so you guys can understand where, where I am with it. Um, like, how do you feel about that part? And with the, with the, you know, just rewarding just for the sake of rewarding. I mean, I, I, I agree with that. I mean, there, you know, there was a social sociology study that basically when you look at, at, medal winners right and you and you see um when you ask the question if you have first place and third place which one actually is is you think feels better out of the whole situation most people would think it's the first place actually it's the second place because in, in, in some aspects you you didn't win but you was close enough and at least you know there's somebody else under you that did much worse so i kind of wonder what you're actually teaching somebody if they even, even if you give them 17 plays, you're saying that they participated, but you're n still not good enough, which is kind of a weird aspect in, in it. But you're just saying since you participated, I'm actually giving you some, um, which means that when you go up, you do maybe feel like as long as I'm, I'm doing enough, I'm good. You know what I mean? As mm -hmm. long as I do enough, I'm good. You know, and, and, and that, that part I do feel weird about. That, that part, um, I agree, with, I agree with, with that whole aspect. I just, again, it's just, it's just a matter of how much you put into stock with that to overall teaching somebody. Like, if we used to go back to the original question, if you say, okay, if you know that tech, tech jobs are coming more um, abundant in society, but you don't have a chance to actually study any kind of technology because your school is, 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 doesn't have that kind of resource, then where does that leave you? So, you know, you still got to give people the opportunity on top of teaching them that other stuff about, you know, competition. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. there, there's competition and there's opportunity. And, and those two things, I think, is, is what would actually push um, people up into the middle class and, and maybe even further. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? But I, I agree. I agree completely. I agree that, that this whole society, um, you know, and, and my big thing is failure. Like, I honestly know one of the things that they told me, because, you know, I'm in school now. One of the mm -hmm. things that my last class taught me is to, to fail early. Because when you fail early, you get all that stuff out the way where you can be the best person that you actually are afterwards. Gotcha. Once you get all those mistakes out. And, and that part you do need to learn. That, that is an individual aspect that everybody needs to learn. Gotcha. So, okay, so you kind of went on to the, uh, uh, you mentioned um, the competition, sort of like uh, Cyrus did as well. Um, I, I guess, you know, my, like my feelings on it is because I'm a very competitive person, very competitive. Um, I find that that study with the second place um, finisher actually being the individual who feels the best. That that is that is that is a weird that is a weird result for me. It, re it really is for, for the type of person that I am. Um, and it's it's, it's not work. about. It is not about me like being a sore loser, so to speak, but it does affect me. If I if I don't win something that I'm involved with, it 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 does affect me. Um, I, I'm immediately focusing on what I did wrong, and if the opportunity presents itself again, what can I do to change the outcome? So, if I but came I in second probably, place, I think it's probably some of the benefits of being a second place person. I don't think it stops there. I think it stops mm -hmm. with like you always have something to chase, like you always to chase for the first place person uh, position compared to mm -hmm. if you're on third now you got two people that you got to beat because you're you're at the bottom you only got three places 
So if you're at that third place, you're automatically at the bottom, so you feel shittier. And, you know, it depends on how you take it. So I think that's probably some of the byproduct of being a second place, uh, you know, winner. I think that's like a an actual super interesting like uh, topic that you brought up, and I I def I I actually agree 100 percent. You know, at second place, as you were saying, you know, you have somebody above you. You're like, okay, now what do I need to do to be first place? What do I need to to, to do to, to to pass surpass that person? And on the other hand, oh crap, I have somebody like right below me. If I slack off, he's gonna pass me up, but he's gonna be second place, and I'm gonna be third place. So it's actually very very interesting, and I. You know, I'm starting to realize, yeah, that's that's a really good place to be, and that's um where where you know like a development actually occurs within our society. So, all right. uh, I, I okay, so maybe all right, so maybe I maybe maybe I'm understanding the study wrong because all right, let me let me go. Okay, so now the second place you said the second place, uh, the individual in second place you said is the happiest. And yeah. okay, so oh, now oh, maybe oh, maybe oh, when I think of happy maybe maybe when I so okay, so just so I'm sure, so maybe when I think of the happiest, what exactly are they happy about? Maybe I should ask that question. But <laughs> like this, because they're not the last. And and also there there is opportunity to get the first. Like think about it. If you was in the first position, like how you just said, if you're you are, you know, you're not at the top. So you think about how can I be at the top? But if you're already at the top already. You know what I mean? Unless you're that kind of person who's like, I'm, I'm gonna stay on top. You already there. You already accomplished the goal. Like, like there, there has been like, if you look about the ideas of happiness. Like I was reading a study earlier about the idea of happiness. That the happiness doesn't come when you actually get what you want. It comes from, from well, actually, when you keep what you want. Basically, it comes from, I want this thing. I'm gonna go get it, and then you finally get it, and that's when you reach that contentment. That's when you, you get that most happiness. But once you have it, what happens? You get tired of it. You get bored with it. You look for the second thing to actually move forward. So you 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 always have something to go for until you get it, and that's a happiness. But happiness is temporary. So you got to keep on moving. So if you're in that first uh, spot, you're in that first place position, you already got what you wanted. So now, what keeps you happy after that? What keeps you content after that? You know what I'm saying? So that's so, why that's okay. I, you happy. Sounds like some more. Um, Sounds like some more. Uh, uh, I, I can't. I don't. Even, I, I don't want to say it like this. Some mind psychological. Psychological. It's very psychological, man. Yes. Very psychological. Yes. Because let's keep it. Let's keep it. I just want to keep it simple, man. I just want to keep right, it right, simple. Right. If I enter some kind of a competition, my my goal is to win, right? If I'm going to buy into this study and say that the second place finisher is the happiest it better be because he's anticipating the opportunity for the rematch it better not be because he's happy that there's a motherfucker behind him excuse my language excuse my language it better not be because of that Whoa. You, 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 it, it, the motivation or the, that energy better be because you're preparing yourself to go attack that first place right, right, right. how would you worry about nobody behind you and, and i would agree with that and i agree i think that's that's the majority of it the most of it is that you're that close to be in the mm -hmm. first place, that all you need to do is tweak yourself to, to move up to that first place even more. Got you. Exactly. Got I would you. say more beneficial, you know, as I said previously, you know, instead of like happiness, but because everyone has their own definition of, of, of happiness and there's different studies, different definitions, but yeah, it, 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 I would agree definitely more um, beneficial than, you know, uh, as Dane was saying, you know, if you're first place, I'm, I'm already the best, so why do I need to continue to train or, you know, or work at it? Well, second place, you know, continues, uh, uh, helps you strive to continue to train and work out and, and do your best to, to eventually achieve that first place. It it it, it uh, instills that that continued drive into yourself. Got you, got you, got you.